If you live in an older home and you have those old style two prong receptacles, they can be kind of a pain because a lot of things that we have nowadays requires that third ground prong in order to be able to function. Things like computers and different appliances. So if you have this situation at your house, what are your options? Well, in this video, we're gonna cover three different ways people tend to get around this. And we're gonna talk about the pros and the cons of each along with what the best option is to fix this problem in your house. All right, so first up, I wanna talk about these little adapters. These things here, I'm sure you've seen these before. These are really common. You can find them in hardware stores and even I think I've seen these in grocery stores too. So all they're used for is uh, they give you the, this ability to plug in a three prong uh, device that has that uh, ground prong here into a two prong uh, receptacle. And you can see how that works here is a two prong two prong receptacle if it'll focus in here. And then here's this adapter, it just goes in just like that. Now these are uh, sometimes called current taps uh, so if you just ask for an adapter, you know, it's not really clear what that might be. So you might have to ask for a current tap if this is what you're looking for. The advantage that this has is if you're in a situation where you're, uh, say, running an apartment that only has the two prong receptacles and you need to be able to plug in something that has three prongs, well, this is probably going to be your only option uh, to get around that issue. Now, I will say, though, that this is not supposed to be a permanent solution. This is only supposed to be temporary. Sometimes people will think that these actually provide you with the ground and it doesn't. And I think the reason why they believe that is because of this little metal tab at the bottom here. So what this tab is for, uh, what you'll do with this is you'll actually take the cover screw out of the uh, cover plate that goes over this outlet. And then you'll put that cover screw through this hole and tighten it down. Okay, so truth be told, what I just explained in the video isn't exactly true. I said that this tab does not provide a ground. Well, it turns out if you read the bottom of this, it says that this tab is supposed to be connected to a ground screw. Now, I did some digging on this, and basically the same scenario applies. You put a screw through this tab, and then that screw that holds the cover plate on connects to the receptacle. And then in theory, how this gives you a ground is that receptacle is connected to a metal box inside the wall and that metal box is connected to some metal conduit that has the wiring ran through it. Now that metal conduit is supposed to be grounded. So in theory, what's going to happen is this ground is going to connect all the way through, through two different screws technically, uh, all the way back down to a grounding source and provide you a ground. Now, I would say that I wouldn't trust that because I can think of a lot of different ways, a lot of different reasons why that ground isn't going to be uh, definitely dependable. So I'd still look at this as a temporary solution, but I did want to make sure that I included this in this video because that's actually what these are supposed to be for. And uh, I want to make sure you have accurate information. A common thing you'll find in renovated houses are these. So instead of having the two prong receptacles, you'll see a three prong GFCI and you'll see these in locations other than just the bathroom and the kitchen, you know, in those wet areas in the house. The reason why these are used is because these can actually work without a ground wire uh, because of the circuitry that's built inside of them. So what the circuitry is designed to do is it's designed to detect the amount of current, the amount of uh, electricity that's flowing between the hot side and the neutral side uh, within this outlet. And if it detects a variance, even a very, very small variance, then it's going to shut the power off to this receptacle and it'll provide you that extra layer of safety and protection. So with these, because it has that circuitry, it doesn't need that ground wire installed. And this is something that is a really solid solution if you're looking to renovate a house on a budget. You don't want to have to pay for you know additional wiring in the home or maybe sometimes you just can't afford to fix a situation at your house. This is going to give you more of a permanent solution. It will give you that third prong and it will give you an extra degree of safety to pr protect you against any kind of uh, ground faults that might occur in your house, uh, or at least with the things that are plugged into this. Now, there have been a lot of comments that I've received about whether or not this is a safe practice or not. It's going to depend on your local electrical codes, but at the same time, it is an NEC approved practice. And I'm going to have a uh, reference here on the screen that will pop up. I encourage you, if you have the 2020 version of the NEC handbook, to go check out this reference, read up on this, and see what it has to say about doing this in-house. Something else you'll find that's pretty common is this thing here that's called a bootleg ground. And what this is is the practice of taking this neutral wire and then connecting it to not only the neutral terminal on the receptacle, but also connecting it to the ground screw as well. Now, this is probably a little bit more common than it should be, unfortunately. And the problem with this, first and foremost, is it's illegal. Uh, second problem is it causes house fires. 
And the third problem is, is it's not approved by the National Electrical Code. So uh, you don't wanna be doing this. Now I will admit this is more of an extreme example because I'm using a ground wire here that has no insulation on it whatsoever. Typically you'd find like, you know, a neutral wire and it would be connected in these two locations. But at the end of the day, this is basically what it is. And what this will do is if you plug in a tester or something like that to see if a ground is present, it's gonna show that a ground is present because of this wire that's connected to this ground here. Sometimes that's done just to pass inspections to sell a house, which is really unfortunate uh, because it is, like I said, a really big safety hazard. Um, but just know that if someone mentions just using a bootleg ground in order to get around it and uh, providing that ground for you um, and doing something like this, then uh, don't do that, okay? Sometimes it is common to confuse which wire is hot and which wire is neutral when receptacles are being wired. And so in really, really unfortunate situations, someone has done this and they've confused what wire uh, goes to which terminal. And actually what ends up happening then is the ground and everything uh, that's connected to that receptacle is actually hot and live. So if they plug in an appliance like a blender or something like that that has a metal casing to it, then the entire outside of that appliance then is actually having live current run through it. And so it's really dangerous practice. Again, I know I've said it before, I'll say it again, don't use bootleg grounds in order to fix this problem, uh, use another method. Now, if you really wanna fix this problem permanently and have all the safety features of having a ground wire, there's simply no replacement to having the proper wire installed in your house. Yes, I know it can be expensive, especially if you have a, you know, a home that's multiple stories, maybe you have a breaker box that's located in the basement and you've got a two-story home, something like that. It can get really expensive because you know typically when you're pulling new wire, you're gonna to have to open up drywall and you have all sorts of things that you might have to deal with. But at the end of the day, if you're selling a house or if you want that peace of mind that everything is right in your home, then I would highly encourage you to contact a licensed electrician and talk to them, see what options you have, and also see what the cost is of actually rewiring your house. You might actually be surprised at what it would take to do this the right way and get the correct wiring installed. And you'll never know if you don't ask. All right, so those are the options. Those are the three common things that I've seen in order to get around not having a ground wire in your house. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.